Yeah. So, <laughs> confessions of lazy gardener this time of year. I've got a lot of dead stuff growing in my garden. A lot of it. But we're going to be a little bit more positive. It's not exactly dead. Yeah, this is actually looking pretty dead. Um, we're going dormant. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. will sing about your heart maybe the trees will whisper the word maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope mm -hmm. i've got to clean all of my brush up and collect some seeds <laughs> yeah i've got some work to do if you don't know who I am and you are new to my channel, my name is Kaylee and I am a modern day homesteader. I'm also a beekeeper, gardener, and do a little bit of everything. I take my camera around and I share a lot of what we do here on the farm with you guys. Whether you guys are dreaming to have your own homestead or you are just living vicariously through me, I welcome all and anyone. But this is definitely embarrassing. Look, look at all that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, other than a bunch of dead stuff, I do have a lot of live stuff and I was able to share that with you guys yesterday because it was 50 degrees. Well, or the other day. I shared it with you. Anyways, all of our hives were flying and the girls were just enjoying the day. were all basil plants <laughs> my hand smells like my hand smells like basil <laughs> this was my first year growing in the ground cover and I cut holes in the ground cover about a foot apart depending on what I was planting and I can already say it's a lot easier although I do understand the aspect of tilling pulling everything up and tilling it and having it nice, but I am trying to experiment with the whole no-till gardening and, and learn a couple of different traits and skills from other gardeners. Now, this ground cover definitely saved me because I am not <laughs> the most productive gardener and you guys see just a little glimpse of my life, but outside of growing vegetables, I do keep many hives and am anticipating a lot more hives this coming spring. My main idea for gardening is to garden with the least amount of work, or maybe that's just justification for me being lazy, but I'm not, I swear I'm not. I just have a million other things that I'm also doing on top of gardening. The lazy gardener in me really likes this ground cover. Um, yeah, there were some weeds that broke through, but essentially nowhere near the amount of weeds that I experienced in the past strictly growing in ground. Now there are some things that I could have done different. I could have used mulch, I could have used cardboard, um, but this just, I wanted to try this. And isn't that, that's what gardening is about, is trying new things and seeing what works and what doesn't work. At least for homesteading, it is. I ended up having to put my bee veil on because I was apparently bothering the bees, which is another reason why I think it's time for, for all of these colonies to go. See, my first couple of years of beekeeping, I actually had 
I had my, my bees in my garden, which they never bothered me. I never bothered them. But that was when our count was maybe, I think eight, around eight colonies. Now this year we have gotten quite a bit more. Um, so I just think it's a mutual decision when it comes to moving the bees out of the garden into their own new pasture, which I am looking forward to. We are one side down, the high tunnel's done. I'm gonna slowly start working on each one of these beds. Then we have to go mill some boards, so I better get back to moving. Ah. <laughs> There's another one. Okay, so another, yeah, this is, this is kind of funny. Um, I started cleaning out this spot right here, which is connected to that spot. This was my, my potato garden. And as I'm cleaning it out, <laughs> I'm finding potatoes. Look at all my little potatoes. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna say there's probably a lot more potatoes in this area, so. I just love garden surprises, and this is definitely one of them. So we're having potatoes for dinner. <laughs> I got a good portion of the garden kind of cleared out, and not all of it's done, and I won't do it all today, but but I know that here in the next couple of days there are gonna be some warmer days and, and no snow, so this time of year when I'm not working in my garden, I do a little bit here and a little bit there to kind of keep me busy. I miss the plants, I miss my flowers, I miss seeing all my bees fly, I miss being able to not come out and wear layers to do any work, but to each season does bring something. And, and this season, this time of year is, is kind of my treasure map, my dreaming, my what is my garden going to look like this coming year? Um, how are my plants going to do? How are my bees going to do? I, I look at this palette and to many it might look like chaos, but to me it's, it's almost a blank canvas. Almost. Let's go see if the saw mill's running. deeper than what I thought. Um, my feet are cold and wet. I think I'm gonna have to get some bigger muck boots. definitely starting to get chilly. So they're not gonna operate the mill today, but what we're doing is kind of getting everything lined up and ready to go for our next mill day, which I feel like we might do a little bit tomorrow, but not 100% sure. It is gonna warm up, so we're gonna take advantage of that. The log that's going on the mill right now is a massive ash tree, and that log is hopefully gonna finish giving me all the panels for our fence to finish fencing around our new garden area.
I'm gonna head up because I'm due to make a new batch of fire cider. And this recipe is gonna be an interesting one. So mom already beat me to the fire cider, which is fine. You guys should see this fire cider. It's absolutely beautiful and what's in it? Blood red oranges and um, navel oranges and they've been scrubbed really good. You put just sliced and put them in there. Um, I had a special treat which was Meyer lemons. So there are Meyer lemons in there also sliced really thin. Um, for color I put in red onions, sliced really thin, skin and all, and then one white onion. And I kind of divided them up over the three jars. Um, didn't have habanero, but I had jalapeno, so I've That'd got about six jalapenos in there, divided up, maybe seven. I don't Do you know. have radishes too? Um, yep, little radish. Um, horse radish. Horse radish root, um, red radishes, the and ginger. Um, mm -hmm. I did an extra, extra ginger, cranberries, yeah, I see uh, the cranberries, rosemary, rosemary. and turmeric, and then I was reading one. I don't know if I'm going to do it this time, but maybe next time. Um, they put echinacea leaf in. Oh, it. that's interesting. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Up to you. But anyway. And then your last and, then and the last ingredient is pomegranates. We just gotta add in, finish adding in the pomegranate and then fill it with apple cider vinegar. We, we, we flip ours once a day and then let it sit for about a month and pour it off and there's our own fire cider. We did use the apple cider vinegar with the mother. Um, I just think that's so important. Can you smell it? I can. My just... my eyes were burning when I came in. She, <laughs> she, she cut up all the horseradish. I was like, it was oh a my big horseradish root. <laughs> That's the only thing that's bad about fire cider is that horseradish is strong and your eyes are going to be watering. You think onions bad? No, horseradish. That's horseradish will drop you to your it's, knees. It's it's <laughs> intense. Thank you guys for watching, and as always. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old.